God of all newness and beautiful new life bless you today through Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. Amen. Well, if you look at our culture today, everybody's always after something new, aren't they? You gotta get a new iPhone, you gotta get a new computer, you gotta get a new car, some people want a new spouse. <laughs> you gotta get the newest and latest of everything. If you look at advertising, turn on the TV and watch the advertising, they're always trying to get you to buy the newest and latest model of this or that, right? They don't say, come and buy this good old clunker of a car, it's the same as we gave you last year. It's always going to have some new feature until we have all these features we don't even need or really want. But they've got to give you the newest, latest model. Now, why do you think it is that everybody in our culture always seems to be going after what's new? We gotta have the, even the newest, latest, like Cheerios. They can't just give you a Cheerios. It's like, this is Honey Nut Cheerios, or this got 100% whole grain, all new. Why do we always need new, 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 new? Well, I think one of the reasons is because we're feeling old, 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 old. The world gets old. Our relationships get old. Our bodies get old. Life breaks down. Life gets old. And so we want things that are new. We think maybe if I can get new stuff, you know, a new boat or a new set of suit of clothes or a new car, I'll feel all new and my life will be all new. But the trouble with that is, is the things in this world can't satisfy you for long or really have any power to make you new. You just feel kind of good for a little while, but pretty soon, guess what? Today's new is tomorrow's old, and you're sick of it. And so, let's talk today, though, about the power of God to make all things new for us in our lives. Because I'll tell you something, if you look at this word through the Bible, the word new, it occurs all the time in reference to God speaking to his people what he's doing for them. And we might not have realized this theme through the scripture. Let's take a look at several ways. In fact, I'm going to quickly run through 12 things in the Bible, since it's a good biblical word, about how God makes us new. And it's going to go fairly quickly, so don't think 12 will be here until tomorrow, right? First of all, one thing God gives us to make us new is he gives us every day a new day, a new morning, a fresh start. With a promise attached to it, and let's read that promise now in Lamentations. Because here we meet a man, Jeremiah, he felt life was old, really old. You want to hear how old it was? He says, I'm a man who has seen affliction under the rod of his wrath, etc. He says, he has filled me with bitterness, sated me with wormwood, my soul is bereft of peace, I have forgotten what happiness is. Does that sound like a guy who's feeling life is old? Jerusalem's been crushed. Babylon has taken over. The whole landscape has been destroyed. And here he's left all alone, more or less, with a ravaged country. And he says, God is my glory and my expectation from the Lord. In other words, I have no more hope of happiness from God. But then the Spirit gives him this into his own spirit in verse 21. He says, But this I call to mind, and therefore I hope the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. So based on that verse, how does God make you new? One way he makes you new in the Bible. A new day. And his mercies are new to us every morning. Now, do you have days where you feel like you just messed up and you're a failure and your life was a wreck? Guess what God says? The next day I make my sun to rise on you again and with it, new mercies. The washing away, a new life. Every day, every 24 hours, you get a fresh start from God. That's what the scripture says. Remember that movie City Slickers? About those uh, Billy Crystal and those middle-aged guys and they uh, go out into the... And a dude ranch to ride across the country and try to refine their lives and have them renewed again by riding and driving the cattle. At one point, one of the guys goes into the tent and he's like, my life is a wreck. 
I've committed adultery on my wife, my marriage is miserable, uh, everything is a disaster, I am a failure. And his friends come alongside and said, remember when we were little boys and we went out and played stickball, and when we'd have that big swing at that bottom of the ninth, and we'd miss it, we'd call it do-over. He says, your life is a do-over. We erase the failures and we start again. Well, that's what they said in the movie. But I'll tell you something. God says that to you every day. He says, you may have failed today. You may have had a messed up life today. You may have sinned even against me today. But tomorrow morning, I make my sun rise on you again. His mercies are new to me every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. God says, I will give you fresh mercies like the dew that falls from heaven upon the grass. You ever look out and... And all the grass is filled with this beautiful, moist dew and droplets of sparkling crystal waters. God says, that's what I'm going to do in your life. I'm going to rain down my grace, the forgiveness of sins, for this is what I did for you in Christ in sending Him to redeem you, so that every day when you wake up, whether you failed or succeeded on the day before, this new day you walk with your Father, as a father with his son, through a new day. Let's walk it together. God says. He says, my mercies are new. They're fresh to you. And my steadfast love shall never end. It will never cease. It's new to you every morning. Great is my faithfulness. So that's one great way that God starts us every day. Every 24 hours will the new start. Amen? Amen? Secondly, though, we might say, but you know, how do I know today is going to be better, any better than yesterday? Because there's an ancient story and mythology of Sisyphus. He was condemned by the gods, at least in mythology, to continually roll a boulder up a hill. And every next day, he'd wake up, the boulder would be at the bottom of the hill again, and he'd have to push it up for all eternity. Sometimes our lives can feel like that. Like, I failed yesterday, got a new start, but how do I know I won't fail again today? Well, we may have our stumbles, but God gives us this. Let's take a look here, another passage. Mark chapter 1. We read there that there was a man who had a demon. And this is in verse uh, 21 and following. Mark chapter 1. And he, uh, over here, had an unclean spirit. And Jesus said, be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing, I mean crying with a loud voice, came out of him. And all the synagogue, it says, they, they were all amazed. And they questioned among themselves, what is this? A new teaching. For with authority he commands the unclean spirits and they come out. What kind of teaching was that? New. new. A new teaching. A new word. And God gives us every day into your hands, into your hearts, into your minds a new word for a new life. A new teaching. You ever open the Bible and you read the same passage and you're like, I've read that a thousand times but oh, I saw something new in this. That's what the word of God is like. This is a sword that God puts in your hands, friends. He says, brandish it. Take it out of its sheath. Put it in your hands each morning. It's going to make you new. It's going to give you a better day than you had yesterday. The power to conquer. For here, the new teaching cast out the enemy. And so also in our lives. A new word. God says in Isaiah 57, Thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place, and also with him who is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite. On a scale of 110, how much reviving do you need today? Do you feel kind of tired? Oh, life is old. Oy vey. And today is like yesterday. Oh. But God says, no, no, look, there's a new word. You put this into you, I'm going to give you new power for new strength. For a new day, and it may not be perfect, but it's going to be better than yesterday, and you're going to conquer through Him who loves you, whose word I've, I've put into your hands. Open my eyes, says the Scriptures, that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. Revive me according to thy word. So that's another way God revives us, by His word. A new day every 24 hours, and into our hands, a fresh word to make us new. And then in that fresh word, he tells us something very special about our relationship with him. Let's turn there in Jeremiah 31. 
Number third, third thing God gives to us is this. It's called a new covenant. He says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel and Judah. Not like the covenant that I made with our fathers when I brought them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I'll make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. In other words, this is the covenant God has with you and me through Jesus Christ. He says, I'll put my law within them. I'll write it upon their hearts. I'll be their God. They shall be my people. And they shall no longer teach every man, uh, his neighbor and his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least to the greatest of them, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. So what's the third way God renews us? You know, if you have a wedding ring to show that you have a covenant with your spouse, well, God gives us a ring called a new covenant through Jesus Christ. And what's it look like? <clears throat> this next day when you wake up, this next 24 hours, when my mercies are new to you every morning, and I give you my word, I also tell you this, you're going to live in this kind of a relationship with me. I will be your God. You will be my people. You will know me. I will know you. And here's the beautiful thing. I forgive all your sins. I will pass by your, uh, pass over your iniquities and your sins I'll remember against you no more. Does that mean God forgets what you did yesterday or forget your sins? He still remembers what they are, but he doesn't remember them against you. Like the whiteboard in the children's message, he wipes the slate clean. Brand spanking new. This is the new covenant he gives with you and me and Jesus Christ. You ever go around with, in your relationship with God and it's old? Maybe you're under the old thinking, you're all under the old covenant of Moses. That it's a do this or die covenant. But the new covenant is, God says, I do this and you will live. The old one is dependent upon your obedience. The new one upon God's faithfulness to you. A faithfulness he'll never break. For great is my faithfulness, says the Lord, to walk with you through the new day. The old covenant is like you're standing naked on a cliff with two little goose feathers saying, I think I can fly. And you jump off and you crash. The new covenant is you're on the cliff face and a great mighty eagle, a giant winged eagle comes and flies under you and puts you on his back and carries you and makes you ride upon the heights of the air. This is the new covenant that you have with God through Jesus Christ. God says, this will make you new every day. I forgive your sins. I don't remember them against you. I am your Father. I'm your God. You're my people. You know me, and I know you. Now come on, let's walk through this day together as a father and a son, or a father and a daughter. For Jesus, says the Scriptures, is the surety of a better covenant. The first one's not as good as the one we got now, because this one's better, because it's enacted on better promises, namely, God wiping that slate clean. And you can go out of here today totally clean and fresh in the forgiveness of your sins. For in speaking of a new covenant, it says in Hebrews, God treats the first one, the old covenant, as obsolete. And what's becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to just vanish away. If you put it in the drawer and forgot, God's got a new covenant with you. A new one. That's a beautiful thing. So it gives you a new day with new mercies every 24 hours. He gives you a new fresh word and he gives you a new covenant. What else? Fourthly, he says, I give you a new life. Let's take a look at that. And this happens every day, by the way, but especially when we're baptized. Here we read in Romans chapter 6. Don't you know that all of us who've been baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in an old, crappy life. No. What's it say? Who knows it? In newness of life. Think about that. All the words God uses to describe you and your life. He says, you walk in a new life every day because you've been baptized into me. And truly, I say to you, whoever believes, Jesus says, has eternal life. You're saved by faith. And if anyone is in Christ, he is what kind of a creature? A new creature. What's a new, what's a new creature look like? <laughs> <laughs> 
Is that a new creature? Or is that what you look like most of the times when you wake up? I feel like that a lot of times. But what's a new creature look like? <sighs> Breathing in, standing tall, arms spread out in victory, receiving grace from the Lord. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature, says the Bible. A new creature. The old has passed away, the new has come. Let God breathe life into you today. God says, this is what I tell you that you are. And with a new life, what do you get? Let's turn to Ezekiel. This is again a prophecy of you and me. I will give them one heart, and I will take the stony heart of, the, out of, out of, heart out of their flesh, and I'll give them a heart of flesh, that they may walk in my statutes, statutes and keep my ordinances, and they shall be my people, and I their God. So what's God give us? In addition to a new life, a new heart. Think about this heart inside of you. Would you like a new heart? Does that get old and crusty sometimes? Grumpy? Tired? Weary? God says, I'm going to make that fresh every day. New mercies every 24 hours. I got a new covenant for you. I'm your God. I put a new heart inside of you that's going to start being gentle, kind, loving other people because it's being made fresh. What's an old crusty heart like? It's like just crumbly old cookie. You hit it and it breaks into a thousand pieces. But the new one, it's like a, a living, vibrant fountain that God puts into you where there's heart of, out of his heart shall flow rivers of living water, God says in John 7. That's, that's the Holy Spirit. A new heart I give you, and with it, like we said there, a new spirit. I skipped this part. And I'll put, give them one heart, and I'll put a new spirit within them. Do you have a new spirit inside of you? Would you like a new spirit? Does your spirit get old and tired and, and just down and discouraged and disheartened and defeated? God says, no. Today, every 24 hours, in the new covenant, I'm putting you a new spirit. Which is which spirit? My Holy Spirit, in whom you're sealed for the day of redemption. So you have the Holy Spirit, but every day that fountain can have the corks pulled out of the floodgates and fill you again with a new spirit. And what's that do for your life? What's it look like when you have a new spirit? When you have a new spirit, remember when David was uh, anointed by Samuel and God said, go anoint him. This is the one. This is he. And he poured the whole oil upon him. He was anointed and the Holy Spirit came upon David. And all of a sudden this young boy, a young man, goes up and there's a giant attacking the whole countryside. Goliath, uh, facing the army. He says, give me a man that we may fight together, says Goliath. And he wants to just destroy a man. And David, everybody else is quivering in their boots. David, with a new spirit inside him, goes up to him and says what? He says to the other man, he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And Goliath says, come over here and I'll teach you a thing. David says, you come over here, I come to you. And I'll teach you a thing. This day the Lord will give you into my hand. And I'll strike you down and cut off your head. That all Israel may know that there's a God. That all the world may know that there's a God in Israel. And David ran quickly to the battle line. And struck down the giant. Do you know that the spirit only came upon David in those days. But God puts a new spirit in you. Says scripture. The same spirit. The Holy Spirit. But inside you to supercharge you. And fill you so that when you go into the giants of your life, whatever they may be, your job or your spouse or whatever else you're fighting or going through in life, you go and conquer by the Spirit within you. We can be renewed in this every day and be made strong in this. And with it a new nature. Let's read that one. 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. We read this. 1 John chapter 3, verse 9 says, No one born of God commits sin. For God's nature abides in him, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. Doesn't mean we don't have little trips and stumbles along the way, but God's put a new nature inside of you. It's called a divine nature. Your partakers with it, says Peter, of the divine nature. What's that mean? The heart, the spirit that you've got in you, and inside of you is God's own nature. Think about that. Is God up there in heaven going like, oh... What a day I'm having. Oh, I can't wait till this day is over. Dragging myself through eternity. This is so tough. Is that God's nature? 
No, but God says, I put my nature inside of me. What kind of nature is it? Strong, champion, the Lord's a man of war, says in Exodus 15. You go forth and say, I'm more than a conqueror through him who loved me. I'm sure that nothing can stop me or separate, separate me from the love of God for me in Christ Jesus my Lord. Can you say that today? Could you say that today? I'm more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. This is the spirit, the nature God's put in you. To love Him, to desire His ways, to walk in them, and whenever you do stumble, quickly to repent and be washed, have the sleep wiped clean again. And God puts into you what else? What does it say? What does it say? <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4 we're on number 8 by the way it says put off your old nature which belongs to your former manner of life and be renewed in the spirit of your minds it says uh, put on the new nature and put on the new nature created after the likeness of God and true righteousness and holiness would you like your mind renewed does your mind get old Bogged down, worried, depressed, defeated, discouraged, got all the cares of life on here. God says, no, 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 no. In the new covenant, every 24 hours, in the new spirit, in the new, new nature, I also give you a new mind. And every day I'm renewing this by my knowledge I'm pouring into you, by my spirit that's inside of you, so that your mind every day is newer and fresher and more like me. And that's what the mind that God is putting inside of us to make us like himself. It says also number nine, I raise you up in baptism to a new road and to a new purpose. You ever see Groundhog Day, that movie with Bill Murray? Remember that movie? Where he, he like lives the day and then at the end of the day he goes to sleep and he wakes up and it's the same hour, the same day and he has to do it again because the groundhog doesn't come out of his whatever, his hole and see his shadow. So every day, he keeps living the same day over and over. How does he start out? He starts out living for himself. He tries to get the girl in bed with him. And he learns over five or six days how to do that. And he tries to live for all the pleasures. But he gets so miserable, he then tries to start killing himself. Driving his car off a cliff. Doing anything he can to destroy himself because he hates life. But then what happens? He wakes up and he, he's still alive again the next day. So he decides to start living for other people. He saves a guy at a restaurant with the Heimlich maneuver. He goes and helps this person here. He fixes a person's car tire. He does everything to live to the service of other people. And finally, he finds his freedom from the endless cycle. When God raises us to a new life, what kind of new life does he give you? A new purpose. To serve other people. Listen to this. I'm going to open up again. John. Chapter 13, Jesus says, A new commandment I give you, that you love one as I've loved you, that you also love one another. Is that your purpose in life? you like Groundhog Day going drudgery, or are you going with freshness of purpose to a new service of another person? You know, I say it like you guys, and like a lot of other people, like Joel and, and uh, Richard, and how many other sailors we got? Yeah, I've sailed... You know, probably 7,000 miles in search of an adventure. But I'll tell you, I spent seven minutes two weeks ago doing something that was far greater. I saw a guy that was shuffling down the street. He was hot. He was very down and out. Very hot day. And I turned my car around and went back and found him in the public's parking lot. I said, hey, can I buy you a drink? Cold drink? And I went in and bought him a Coke. He wanted a Coke. I'll tell you what, I left that more refreshed than he did. That's the joy of the new purpose that God gives us in Jesus Christ of a new life. That when we live to serve, it refreshes us and makes our life new every time we do it. Isn't that great? This could be your life for the rest of your life if we set our hearts on service. It refreshes those who do the refreshing. And God also says, number 10, I give you new strength into your bodies. Do you know that even if you're You've totally messed up in life, and you've been a drug addict, or an alcoholic, or whatever else it is, that your whole bloodstream is new every 121 days. If you can just get off it, God's designed your body to make the blood all new after four months. Your whole body, more or less, is entirely new with all new organs every seven years. And we can get tired, and 
our bodies can seem to break down. But remember Samson, at the end of his life, when his body was breaking down, he fell, and he was at the end of his life, and he's in chains. He says, but Lord, this one more time, strengthen thy servant, that I may get the final victory. And he leaned and bowed with all his weight upon the two pillars upon which the house of that false god, Dagon, was built. And with all his might, he bowed his strength, and the Lord gave him the strength to get the final victory. Would you like some more strength in your body? Have you not heard, have you not seen that the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth? He doesn't faint. He doesn't grow weary. His understanding, it's unsearchable. And what's he do? He gives power to the faint. To him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and grow weary. Young men fall exhausted. But they who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, Run and not be weary. Walk and not faint. Would you like that in your life today? Ask Him. Renew my strength, O Lord, like Samson. Yet this one more day, this one more time, give me the final victory and bow with all your strength and the Lord will pour divine power into you. He does it. He does it for me. He does it for you. Renews your body. And even if your body's wearing out, our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed every day. And it's preparing us for an eternal weight of glory, says Paul, beyond all comparison. For we have this hope of a new body to be given to us. Behold, we're God's children now, says John. But it doesn't appear, we, but we shall be. But we know that when Jesus appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Getting toward the end. That's number 11 out of 12. So think about this here. Is your body getting old? Body getting hurt, your body not working like it should, and you're feeling old. That kind of thing. Well, guess what God says? But I'll renew your strength today, but you have a bright hope for tomorrow for your body. I promise you, and I'm going to make it all new. When I appear, when Jesus appears, I'm going to make you like me, for you shall see me as I truly am. You're going to be raised imperishable, full of power, uh, full of glory. And a spiritual body, says 1 Corinthians 15. And Jesus says, you're going to shine like the sun in the kingdom of your Father. So that's a fresh hope right there. And finally, number 12, God promises, this even old world, what's now breaking down before your eyes under the curse, yet this world, you're waiting for a new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. For behold, says John, I saw a new heavens, a new earth. And the first heaven, the first earth, they passed away and the sea was no more. But then we're going to hear a voice from the throne, like with the sound of a trumpet. Behold, the dwelling of God is with men. God says, I'll dwell with you. You'll dwell with me. And I'm going to wipe away all the tears from your eyes. I'll put away death. There shall be no more crying or or mourning, or pain anymore. All these former things I'm going to put away, and I who sit upon the throne shall say, Behold, I make all things new. And even the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay, and obtain the glorious liberty of the children of God. So we're at the end of the message for today, but I'll tell you this, look, a new day every 24 hours, with new mercies promised to it with a new triumphant word, with a new covenant, with a new mind, a new heart, a new, a new nature, with a new spirit, with a new purpose, with a new life, with a new strengthened body, with a promise of a future body, with a promise of a future world. Think about how often in Scripture God uses the word new when He's talking about you. And may you be refreshed today, such that we can, here's the final new, Psalm 40. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Yes, many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. In Jesus' name.